We're going to go ahead and cover a few of the command line options that we can use inside of the ESXi hosts. So when you're setting this up or when you want to perform a backup or recovery of ESXi, you're going to want to do it from the command line if, you, uh, if you're able to. Um, mostly for just that, that ease of use and automation. Uh, being able to get into the command line on something like a host, you're going to uh, uh, be able to shoot off things through Ansible or or other uh, uh, automation tools. So first things first, make sure that your SSH is running. So I went ahead and put this into maintenance mode. Uh, it's a requirement to have it in maintenance mode for backup. So I uh, went ahead and did that before this because sometimes draining a node, uh, you might have a VM that's hung up with uh, you know the host CD-ROM or you know so, something like that there, there might be some goofy background connection to hardware so what we're looking at inside of here is we are going to use the ESX CLI we can go ahead and you know oh, list what it is that we can mess with so I mean there are some some commands in here uh, interesting stuff, you know, the device manager, you can actually look at some of the PCI Express stuff. Um, looking at all the, the different piece parts, usually the, the first one that comes up for me is network. That's generally one of the first things that you're going to be messing with, because while you're building this out, <clears throat> you're probably going to want to have your network build out to automate your VM build out. So for the network, uh, on a small environment, uh, you're probably going to be using standard switches. You can also uh, manipulate distributed switches with this as well. So uh, there's also, you know, the software. This is how you install your your uh, VMware installation bundles, your VIBs. So you can go ahead and list them, look at them, install them. Uh, your storage, uh, you know standard taking a look at it see what's going on inside of it um, and then you know look at that small number of operations for uh, controlling VMs so you know good stuff in here but uh, as I said in general you're gonna be looking at network uh, the other thing that you're probably gonna get used to initially is you're gonna start looking at the VMware file system so if we look at this so you, you'll see that the volumes in there you'll have boot bank you know that that's where um, you'll have things like your grid GPU driver your vSAN drivers your NSX drivers they're gonna reside in the boot banks uh, so each one of these is a uh, share and then the identifier for that share so any anything you have local storage any of that you're gonna have both an identifier and you're gonna have a folder for it so at least they were nice enough to put in that friendly name um, pretty happy about that so if we were to go into vSAN data store this one usually yeah, it takes a little while because it has to query the rest of the vSAN and once again you'll see identifiers and you'll see the the files that are folders that are in there so if we were to take a look at it long listed and then we're going to see how they all map so where this guy maps over to that identifier uh, that's going to be one of those key things where you need to SFTP or SCP a file up to a folder so that you have it in the environment uh, I use this a lot for pushing ISOs up when uh, when there's an issue with getting them onto a content library or prior to having your uh, content library established and you need to install something you can throw an ISO up into a data store so that's that's a pretty common one that you're gonna end up seeing but uh, aside from that when you're looking at the network using the ESX CLI commands here's an ESX CLI command for the network we're going to the standard V switch we're gonna add a port group to it port group is going to be port group 333 on vSwitch 0 so let me let me stretch this out right okay so we've just created that port group right and one of the things I like about this is you know if I were to go in 
and hey, I don't remember the command, but I know it's for the network. Okay, then it's for the V switch. So there we got our V switch. Standard port group. And instead of add at this point, look at look at it and go, oh, okay, we need to set. We want to set the VLAN ID. Well, how do you set the VLAN ID? Oh, okay. The port group name and then the VLAN ID. So we can go ahead and set on PG333 the VLAN 333. Right? So I mean good good stuff there. We can go ahead and go right back over to here. We can take a look at our virtual switches and we can see that port group 333 is here. little bit odd. There we go. VLAN ID finally caught up. And VLAN ID 333. Right. So real good stuff there. Um, obviously because it's a simple command like that you can go ahead and uh, create an entire script. Uh, if you needed to add 20 port groups you can go ahead and set that all into a text file and execute it. Uh, just make sure you can get that, that text file up there. Uh, as I said you can go ahead and get into the VMFS group, put it into a folder up on a data store, uh, make sure it's executable, and then you know SSH in its root, run it, and you'll set up all of your port groups, all of the uh, VLAN IDs for those port groups, and that can work on both standard and uh, distributed switches. Distributed switches are a little less fun, uh, so that's something that you may want to use the API or the GUI to uh, mess with your your distributed switches. There's a lot more settings in there that you might want to get a graphical representation of to really identify what it is you're doing. But uh, for the backups, um, we can go ahead and let's see. So what I ended up finding out was uh, I had an issue with the SOAP port and the issue with SOAP was actually that there was no downloads directory in Scratch. So I just went ahead and made the directory in Scratch. So if you end up with a, uh, a fault when you're trying to run the command, the issue is that there's no downloads directory in Scratch. So we go ahead and run the, there we go, command host services. So this is what we need to copy. Paste that in there. And what we're looking for is there we go. Proceed, and there's our configuration bundle. So that is our you know backup, and then uh, from inside of oh, <laughs> from inside of here, we can actually take a look at that vim command host service firmware hit enter and you'll see this is where you can also restore your config so from this point we should be looking at running the uh, same command all the way to the restore config and we'll have wanted to load it our bundle up so once again that is going to be the uh, SSHing into potentially a VMFS volume or just into the temp directory if you have one and loading up that tarball so you point to that you're good to go you go ahead and execute this now keep in mind you need to be in maintenance mode for both backup and recovery but this should recover everything um, in general what I'm looking at with this is you, know, you got 20 nodes one of them fails what's the fastest way to get that node back up and running you go ahead and pull that. So, um, if you are looking at something, you know, some other type of configuration here, what we'd be looking at is profiles. So, uh, inside of here, the host profile, you can go ahead and um, attach a host profile. You can create your profiles inside of the policies and profiles. Go to your host, you know, extract a host profile. So ESXi node 02, next. So 
So making sure that you have a host profile is checking compliance, whereas making sure you have a backup of a system means that you have a method of recovery. So you install a raw ESXi, you're going to want to make sure that you have the backup and the recovery capability. Once you're recovered, you want to make sure you're compliant with security, you have the profile. Another fun one in here that we can go ahead and take a look at is let's go ahead and uh, uh, start start fishing around for some commands in here, right? So we can do the vsan. I want to say it's cluster get. Yeah, cluster get. All right. So inside of here, this is this is some pretty good stuff. Uh, so. It has your node UID, you know, it's got all these this UID information and it's got all of the other member UID information. Uh, so I have actually had a power outage inside of a, a lab with some critical data. And what I ended up being able to do was run through the uh, command line here, remove hosts from that, uh, you know, just, just go ahead and say, hey, I'm not part of that anymore. And it didn't affect the drives that were in use for that, that cluster when you did it one at a time. So I was able to go ahead and pop them off of the cluster because they're having communication issues, pop them back onto the cluster, and completely recover the vSAN with no data loss. So uh, going through, you know, these join and leave commands, uh, I, th this restore the, the vSAN cluster configuration. I think that's a new one since like 6.5 or 6.7. But uh, yeah, manually recovering can be done through the command line. And that's, uh, you know, it's one of those, you know, sweating bullets while you're doing it, but you feel pretty good about yourself when you get it done. Uh, yeah, the, these are this is a pretty important set of information right here. Uh, and uh, don't underestimate the power of it. So it, it's... Uh, it's a pretty cool thing. Uh, the ability to automate anything with vSAN, I'm not sure if I would recommend that just because a lot of your commands here are incredibly basic and that's where you're going to want to start getting more into the REST API rather than into command line. Uh, so the that's about as far as I'm going to go with that. I mean, I'm sure there there are some you know brilliant people out there that are able to do some amazing things in the command line with this. Uh, you fat finger that you're in big trouble. Whereas with the REST API, you can kind of do it, undo it, you know, you pull what was originally there, push something, and then if that doesn't work, you uh, you push what the original was, and you're back to your normal state. So. I think REST API is a little bit safer when it comes to something like this. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, another little fun fun piece inside the command line um, and another nice troubleshooting tool. Uh, so I really wanted to go ahead and cover uh, one of the other pieces of this uh, puzzle here and that is recovering your vCenter server. So as you're building out, uh, if you are very rapidly creating an environment. Uh, generally this will be a collapsed environment where you don't have a, a management cluster. Uh, you may end up with a single vCenter server. When you end up with a single vCenter server and you know, you're building along kind of just you know churning out what needs to be churned out, you may not have backed up. And if you're using distributed switches, you may not have backed up your distributed switch either. So when we look at this vCenter server we'll be able to see that it's on this PG VLAN 03 so we've got that port group VLAN 03 and inside of here we've got port group VLAN 03 on our distributed switch so if we lose vCenter the ability to, to modify this distributed switch goes away there's ways to fix that with ephemeral port groups you know things that you would want to uh, look into for your design uh, this is just a, a, you know, hey, heads up, when you guys are, are trying to move too fast, you may end up in a situation where you, you've got to work your way out of it. So with the distributed switch, if you needed to back it up, you go into the settings, export the configuration, it's going to go ahead, and, uh, since we have NSX configured, ask if we want to, you know, back that up as well, or the distributed switch only. You can go ahead and perform the distributed switch only, it creates a zip file, you now have a backup file, you're good to go there. Uh, if you have to rebuild your vCenter server, uh, the, the way that I would go about the flow I would use for that 
is pull off the nick of a uh, host and build out your vCenter server, add that single host, create the distributed switch, and then from inside of here, you go ahead and restore that configuration. So that's one backup that you would definitely want to take for your distributed switch. You also want to make sure that you have a backup of your vCenter server. Um, once you have the vCenter server back on the distributed switch in the correct port group, then you can perform your recovery and not have to worry about anything really getting too wonky on you. So the way that we would pull that off, pull that uh, physical NIC off of a node and or, you know set it for a standard port group so that we can actually build out the vCenter server uh, and and you know control everything properly is first off we need to go ahead and show our NIC so we can go ahead and take a list of what NICs we have connected so um, this obviously isn't showing where they're connected to. We can go ahead and, and dive around, dive deeper into it to take a look where. This one's pretty easy to look at graphically. So, hey, we've got these two that are right next to each other that are moving at 10 gig. Those are obviously the ones that I have sitting on a uh, distributed switch. So then if I needed to get those uh, moved from the distributed switch after we've lost vCenter, then we were going to end up uh, entering in a, another command. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and set this for VM NIC 5. Uh, already typed out the command. So it's the ESX uh, CLI network vSwitch standard uplink add and label the you know, what VM NIC it is um, and tell it which vSwitch to go to. So if I perform that operation, then we can go ahead go right back into the ESXi master I can look at my V switches and in a moment after it refreshes we should end up with the VM NIC 5 listed inside of here as well there we go and of course this is showing that it's down uh, not a huge deal uh, that that's you know moving this uh, uh, physical port is for demonstration only so it's it's obviously not up uh, and we can manage the physical adapters to remove it after we're done so um, not a huge deal we can pull it off good to go uh, but that that's how you would move the physical NIC from a distributed switch when you no longer have access to the distributed switch over to a standard switch so that you can build things out um, you know once you have that and you're able to go ahead, build out your, your vCenter server again, recover your distributed switch, recover your vCenter, and then get back into operations. Uh, that's the, the fastest path forward to do that. Uh, and that, you know, I, I have been bitten by that a few times from power outages. So that's just one of those items that I've, I've kind of learned how to deal with it, uh, how to, to get everything back up and running as quickly as possible. But, uh, yeah, so that, that's a uh, nice little trick there for when you're, you're moving fast in a uh, constrained environment, how you can perform your recovery.